what I'm going to try not to do is go like this in the microphone, okay? So um, I'm not going to be able to talk to you, so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do to begin with. The stance for this one is quite important. What I do is take the drill with the blunt end pointing up on the inside of the bow, twist it round so that the blunt end is facing down and the drill is on the outside of the bow, okay? That allows me to get the maximum amount of travel on the drill, okay? So that I don't have to go quite as fast as what you probably expect. I then take my left foot, because I'm right-handed, and I pop the arch in my foot as close to the hole that I've created as I can comfortably get it, and just make sure that the shoelaces are, tra uh, are tucked out of the way. Okay? If you start drilling and the shoelaces start to go inside the drill, then um, again, we're going to be wasting that energy. My right knee wants to be tucked out of the line of the direction that I'm going to be bowing in. So it's quite an unnatural position to be in. It doesn't want to be up here, okay? And you don't want to be sat back here because you can't exert downward pressure. So there are a number of different stances. Some people prefer to bow across. Some people prefer to bow from the side. This is my personal preference, and this is the one that we teach on our courses because we find that you get the highest success rate. Okay. I then <coughs> place the drill. <coughs> Excuse me. Place the drill onto the half wall. The next thing I do is I take my left arm and I wrap it around my leg. If I wrap it around my leg, it means that I can brace my shin up against um, um, up, up against my wrist. Okay. So that stops the drill from wobbling around. The key danger areas. For this is immediately behind me and immediately in front of me. Okay? Um, so if you're leaning backwards or the drill is wobbling around or whatever, the drill can have a tendency to ping out in that direction. So if it goes this way, I'll be fine, I'll be able to catch it. If it goes that way, you know, yeah. I grip the bow. I use my fingers on the string just to take a little bit of tension on the string. And what I do just to begin with is start off nice and slow. A little bit of a sweep there, that's the moisture content that's in the wood. Because what you are supposed to do with this is leave it in your lamp over overnight and it pours down with rain. Yeah, that helps it to soak up all the moisture. That's the job, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just gonna have to work my way through that bit of moisture. Alright, so I'm gonna start off slow and I'm gently going to increase the speed. So I'm not putting too much energy or effort into it at the moment. I'm just getting myself settled down into a rhythm. And I'm starting to get brown powder, but what I actually want is black powder. So I'm just gently going to increase the speed now. Now what I've got now is a whole load of powder which has got self-sustaining smoke on it. <coughs> All I do is just gently wipe some oxygen into there, nice and gentle. I then need to roll the half ball away to get more oxygen into that powder. We've now got all of the time in the world. At the moment, that is just loose powder. If I blow onto that, all that will happen is that powder will then just disperse and go everywhere. Okay? This is why we all wear stupid hats, so that if it's raining, we can give it a bit of protection from the wind or the rain. So I'm just gently wafting at the moment. And we're getting a slow build-up of smoke in this powder now. I'm just gently increasing and now I can see that the powder is starting to change colour. First of all it's gone white. And now it's starting to go red. What's happening now is this powder, I'm going to bring it around so that you can see. 
This powder is raised in temperature. It's getting up to approximately 426.5 degrees. Once it reaches that temperature, that powder then starts to coalesce. It starts to bind itself together. It forms itself into a coal, and we can see that we've got the glowing ember inside there. Can you give that a very, very gentle glow? Very gentle glow. Do it a little bit harder. That's good, that's good. Okay, so we've now got our glowing ember. Okay? So we've created fire Now obviously that's not going to keep you very warm at the moment. So what we need to do is we need to then, the next stage is transfer that in, into a tinder bundle. Okay? All of the time in the world, most people have a tendency to rush at this stage, try and get it into a tinder bundle straight away, all of the powder hasn't had a chance to solidify, and, uh, and then you just blow all of the powder away. We get it into a tinder bundle, a nice big ball of grass, and we're looking for some soft downy type material to put inside it. This for me is bush crap. This, isn't, this goes beyond the survival skills. Okay, so this is about utilizing the natural resources that are available to us, harvesting them sustainably. So this is the seed head of the cattail, or bulrush, a type of sip or the sausage on a stick plant that grows in waste of water. We put that inside the timber bundle and then we anything like that, rosemary, willow, herb, any soft downy type of material and then we blow it into light. Now obviously I'm surrounded by carpet on the inside, so I can't do that inside here. So that's as far as I'm going to take this in the process for this today. So, if you would like to have a go at the fire steels, um, I've got lots of different tinders down here, we'll have a go with the flintle steel. If you are insane and you want to have a go at what is this piece of order, we've got a group fiber kit down here as well. If you'd like to work twos and threes on it, it's much, much easier. But in the meantime, guys, if you want any more information about me and our company, what we do, the store that's just down there is Jason from Woodland Ways. So thank you guys very, very much. Excellent. Yeah, the wine will work on the battery, um, but it will also work for the smartphone fire steel. 